Elton Benjamin coming back. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised. I am so surprised by that. No intro? Like, hey everyone, I'm the humanoid freak. You know what? Shelton Benjamin's coming back. Screw the intro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, he's on the same brand as American Alpha. How awesome is that? Well, American Alpha is basically world's greatest tag team 2.0. A black guy and a white guy, both amazing ass wrestlers. And I was thinking today, are they gonna bring Charlie Haas back too? And do but doesn't Charlie Haas have massive heat with them? Uh, doesn't Michael Hayes? Does he? I'm not aware. Yeah, Michael Hayes hates the fuck out of him. What did Charlie Haas do? Nothing. Just Michael Hayes. You know how he is. He, like, he just yeah. doesn't like him. Plus, like Charlie Haas and Jackie got fired when they uh, were when they were on their honeymoon. I guess. Yeah, because they met when they did that whole Rico team, yeah. right? Uh, did you enjoy that whole thing with him and Rico on SmackDown back then? It was enjoyable. I liked it. Because when it first happened, I thought, what the fuck? But then it, it kind of just, you know, it's like uh, when Morrison, not that I'm comparing them to Miz and Morrison, you know, because... It, it, it was sort of is like Morrison and Miz because it's like a weird ass tag team thrown together. I remember you telling and me it worked back in the day that Miz and Morrison were doing the public enemy thing or something like that. Well, basically any team that's put together out of nowhere is like the public enemy thing because public yeah. enemy was put together at, out of nowhere, just like America's Most Wanted back in the day. <laughs> America's Most Wanted, like I just always think of the TV show when you say that right off the bat, but... So does everybody, man. That's the one thing everybody thinks about. But yeah, not many people watch TNA, man, so nobody knows what the hell they're talking about. Uh, they always think of John Walsh as America's Most Wanted. I was just going to say, like, when Michael... Like, we all love talking about the, the, the political aspects of the wrestling business, but do you just ever think to yourself for a, a minute, like... My God, what petty shit? Why? Why there is always petty shit? Like, like, I, like I said, I just re-listened to the CM Punk interview uh, and all the bullshit he had to go through. It was like, yeah, it's all so petty in that company. Do you ever, even just as a fan of the business, do you ever just get like, do you ever feel like you're just saying the same old thing over and over again, and it just gets kind of like Sometimes. tiring? But yet we still watch the shit. Yeah, it's like speaking of watching, I watched Raw and SmackDown for the first time full show in. The full shows in the first time ever. Like it's been a while since I've seen a full show. Well, what'd you think? Uh it's going okay. Like like the new era of the new era. How many new eras has it been now? There's been like fifteen hundred of them. Wasn't so there a far. new generation back like when we were like ten Bret years old? Red Hart, Shawn Michaels <laughs> era. And then the new era of the attitude era. Okay, I just have to say this. New And new then the SmackDown brand. What was the Bob Backlin era called? The Golden Era. I thought that was the Hulk Hogan era. That is the Hulk Hogan era, but he was part of it. No, wait. It wasn't called an era. It was just an era of wrestling. The good old days. Like Have that. you ever top mapped out the whole timeline of the wrestling business? Going back to like the 50s. The carnival days. William Regal started in the carnival days, which I think is fucking awesome. Just talking Not, about. No, I'm talking about the real carnival days. Way, way back in the day. Well, of course, he started the Carnivals, too, but I'm talking about way no, back No, you want to hear something funny? I was such a mark back in the day that when WCW was promoting Hogan and Sting at Starcade, their thing was that our title is the oldest title. It goes back to the early 1900s and the Farmer Burns days. And Farmer I actually, Burns, that's a name I haven't heard. I before. actually believe that shit, man. But Hey, man, we all believe that the Giant was uh, Andre the Giant's son, man. That's how they got us. But in actuality, their title... Is a different history than the NWA title, so no, it doesn't go back to 1948. It, technically, the WCW. No, because like the NWA title is a different title. Like, Lex, who was the first WCW? Ric Flair, Lex Dugard for uh, Didn't the Flair walk out? Then they had to redesign the fucking thing. And that was before, I guess, because because they had two two world champions. They had the it was called something else, and yeah. then they unified. I just forget. I just know that there was the NWA title, and then, then there's WCW title. That, Either Ric Flair or Lex Luger were the first ever champions. But in all honesty, why are they creating a new title? Why don't they just bring back the world title that they? Cause uh, they don't. They're idiot. I don't know. Speaking of the title, but yeah. Whoa! Oh, for fuck's sake. Ugh. No, but think. Oh, the thunderstorm just made my point clear. Yeah, yeah. No, no, but, no, no. You know, as the joke okay. passes through your head again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, like okay. the universal title. Oh, yeah, yeah. You don't even have to edit the production shit in there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it. there's a thunderstorm. Like, yeah. As soon as we're talking about the universal title, a gloom appears, and there's a thunderstorm outside. 
Oh, oh my god. god. This the name of that shit is. No, horrible. imagine this a credible performer like Finn Balor. I'm the universal, universal champion. <laughs> you know, this is something you would make in a game. The Universal Champion, it'd be all good. Or something like that a Marvel thing. movie or something like that, I guess. I, I don't even think Marvel would even even do that, but think oh Galactic ruler of the universe. The Galactic <laughs> Yeah. Universal Champion. This is how I'm tongue tongue tied of how fucked up this is. It's bad enough that we're called the WWE Universe, a name we never wanted. And it's still going on, but hell, I got used to it, but Having a title called the Universal Title, that's bullshit. Do you, does you, you don't watch UFC, do you? No, I don't watch UFC at all. I, I highly doubt they have a stupid term like that for their, they probably just call them fans, just normal. Just fans. Like, WWE is the only place that gives a name like the Universe. It's, it, it so is like the proverbial, you know, we always called it the WWE glass bubble that Vince yeah. lives in. Fucking, what better term for that than universe? It kind of goes together. So it, 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 it's almost like the guy's on a, a constant fucking ego trip. Vince. It's Vince McMahon. What do you expect? No, I know that. Like, remember when you wore the mafia pinstripe suit? I think that was uh, 2006, 2007. Was well, that when he was getting bald headed? <laughs> got like lost that. Or he had the super head. bandana on his head. He uh, looked so title. weird. But yeah, to name your title the Universal Title. Jesus. 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 But the match is going to be good on the other hand. Finn, Finn Balor and Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. It's like, yeah. Finn ba It's like, like, uh, the shows, man. Like I said, first time watching these shows in quite a long time. It's quite a change, like having Corey Graves as the fresh new voice. Did he give you that Jesse the Body? I haven't watched Raw yet this week, but did he give you that Jesse the Body vibe? Yeah, I don't know yet. I still got to watch more of his stuff. But you know, SmackDown over there, that's like the one I'm starting to like even more. What's his name? Mario Ruiz. Mario Ronaldo. He's Italian. Oh my god, this guy. It's like, how have I not watched SmackDown before? Because this guy, he's like almost the next JR because he puts emphasis into everything. He should be on Raw then. <laughs> yeah, because like, yeah, I'm listening to SmackDown and all you can like, too. nice. But his voice, man, he, like, god damn, this guy is amazing. And you know what's even more cool? And he's partnered with JBL, like, I like that pairing, because JBL, he's not as annoying as he once was. And then we got David Otonga, he's just there, I don't know what to make of him. You he's know what the, the... David Otonga, just there. The forums say, uh, it's nice that JBL's on SmackDown, because the JBL and Cole bromance has been broken up, if you ever noticed that. Yeah, over on Raw. They still Man, do have dude, a romance going on. I never noticed the fate, that. The forced smiling that JBL has to do all the time. I feel sorry for that guy. <clears throat> God, jeez. You know, you know what's funny? On I learned a lot about JBL through his commentary. I never knew that the guy had a stint in Mexico and was a mass uh, lucha libre guy. Did you know that about yeah. JBL? Yeah, wasn't he supposed to be like the new Vampiro, but no one told Vampiro that? And he got I never mad. fucking knew that, which is awesome. <laughs> That's why Vampiro was so pissed off. You and JBL didn't know that. And speaking of Vampiro, he's now currently doing commentary on Lucha Underground. He, he's he's fairly decent. So I listened to his. Uh, did you know that he he's he uh, is like a certified military instructor and he trains. No, uh, I did not know that. And but but he's also a little bit of a weird dude too. We, we all have our quirks. Yeah, like of course, I, he's Vampiro. I, I've heard stories about him going into uh, uh, cemeteries and sleeping in coffins and shit like that. He slept under cars too, because <laughs> he was a homeless dude. After a while. hey, if you're homeless, you got to do what you got to do. But yeah. what's the scene with him and Conan? I kind of forget. I don't even know. I never heard of that heat between him and Conan. I remember going back to their WCW days. <clears throat> I don't remember. I don't really remember. Because so much shit happened in WCW. Uh, if I was to ask you, though, speaking of WCW, we always call TNA the modern day WCW, right? Um, yeah. You think TNA will still be around in five years? <laughs> I'm be surprised if it's still around five years, but it's been going on for like, what, 15 years now? And there's like two or three. I think there's like two originals left in the company because they've all. This? James Storm. And James Storm. Uh, yeah, Borash, that's it. too, if you count him. Well, we're talking about wrestlers here. Borash has actually wrestled the match, I think. <laughs> but Yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's storm. I, just, like, I don't give a fuck, whatever. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Um, so what was the deal? Why didn't James Storm sign with NXT? The money matters? Or, or do you know? Or? 
Because he did like two know, appearances. Like they give him a better contract in TNA. Like like <clears throat> wanted more in WWE, and they said no. Bobby Roode is still trying to work out a contract. Isn't I thought he got it finally. Because no, not yet. They're still working on it. I guess it takes time. Eric yeah. Young is. I guess they're still trying to work out a, a contract with him too. Yeah, it's good. It, it, like, yeah, it is. <laughs> But did you ever think of the day that, like, because I thought there was a unwritten rule in the Fed that they would never sign TNA guys, but I guess that... Well, that was back in the day. Now they don't care. <clears throat> did you watch SmackDown this week or no? I, I got to catch up on a few things. I'm, yeah. I, I'm a little bit behind, but... Um, Eva Marie is on SmackDown. Fuck. I can't stand this woman. Good with the bad, man. It's always going to be there. Like, uh... You know what's funny? I don't think Mark Henry has been drafted to a branch yet. I, I kind of just noticed that. There's a bunch of people like Heath Slater has Heath Slater hasn't been drafted, but he showed up on SmackDown demanding to be signed, and then Rhino shows up and gores him. He still actually does Rhino still give you that nostalgia feeling of actually wanting? Well, to I saw him show up, and I go like, oh shit, it's Rhino. I think they're bringing in. I like MVP has said he's not coming back, but I think they're gonna bring him back. Who knows? There's always rumors. They were saying Shelton Benjamin was coming back all the time, and they never happened. But officially, it's happening now. They say Shelton Benjamin's actually coming the back. The best pure career. athlete round, right? The we're, fucking gold standard, yeah. And should we even go into the fact? I just hope they don't bring back his mama. Huh? She was like some comedian lady. Right? Yeah, she was. Uh, oh, what was that? Like three weeks of his mom. Yeah, whatever it is, what it is. Jeez. And like Just like Viscera, New Day, like, Black Ralph. I still remember like Viscera hitting on her. T- and they had a match in New Year's Revolution. It was god awful. Uh, yeah, you, you also ranted about the Black Ralphist and Herman from Raw, the jobber that. Yeah, that Braun, Braun Strowman, Strowman took on. Of- like, looks like a grown up baby Herman. They're bringing back jobbers now. Just to feed him. It's kind of cool because like, it's good because it, it, yeah. it, it doesn't to build monsters up. You know, like the, when Mia Jax took on some jobber lady. I have no idea. Who you're she aware was. of the term burning out the product, right? Yeah. Obviously, because that's. But they're going back to the '95 way, where like there's like jobbers all the time. Mix it up a bit. It's always good. It's kind of cool. Like, these jobbers together. don't even look like wrestlers. What? Come on. Like, you, you know what's funny? Because we all always talk about this legendary fucking career the Undertaker had. We, we always seem to forget, there was a lot of times, that even on Raw, or normal WWE TV, he'd fight guys like the fucking goon, uh, Salvatore Sincere. He took on Damien Nemento on the first <laughs> Raw. I actually liked that match back in the day. I was such a freaking mark. <laughs> it was entertaining a bit. Or how, how about uh, the fact that Bob Backlund doing his... Did he not stick out like a sore thumb coming back, like in the, the, the new generation in... Doesn't he look like a sore thumb every time he comes back? Well, he, didn't he kind of fit more when you became Crazy Bob? He still is Crazy Bob. <laughs> it's like, he's on SmackDown, and like he's talking, and I'm thinking, like, this ain't his gimmick. This, is actually, his book. this is actually him talking, because, like, whenever he talks, I always think, like, that's not his gimmick. That's actually him talking. Didn't he do some shtick in TNA, too, where he, I, like, He took on the Motor City Machine Guns before they became the Motor City Machine Guns? <clears throat> Like, yeah, they were making fun of him, and like Danny like told him to beat him. He was gonna beat him up, and then he started talking to a wall. I always think Bob has been an exclusive Fed guy, but no, he's worked for other promotions like TNA. Of course, he's worked for other people. Um, he's got to make his money. Like back in the day, uh, uh, WWE, because you know they've always partnered up with like the USWA and yeah. shit like that. Like I think Owen Hart had a couple kick-ass matches with Papa Shango in the USWA. I remember. Papa Shango, what? Wow. Yeah. What? A, what a Charles twist. Wright is actually a cool fucking guy, man. He like he he always. Yeah, take, man, he owns his own strip club in Las Vegas. No, but he's living the dream. He 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 he'll take a, a time out of his day to sign a few fan autographs, have a beer with you, chat about the business. Like, how awesome is that from a fan's prerogative? It is because he does. He is a down to earth guy, and like, I love how his wife is the one that came up with the pimp gimmick. It's like, what? Well, make yourself a pimp. Um. He's part of that fam- famous Undertaker faction. The Beatdown Clan? With Yoko. You've seen photos of Yoko. Yeah. Yoko, Henry Godwin. Yoko was badass, man. He knew, like, people. Dude, that dude was gangster. Everyone who talks about Yoko, they always say the same thing. Yoko was the ultimate gangster. He knew guys that could kill you. <laughs> <basically>. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, Rikishi telling the story of, like, 
how he didn't have a fridge and he's like saying like oh I need to buy myself a fridge and Yoko just takes out his checkbook and just gives him money to buy a fucking fridge <clears throat> just like that because Yoko just made tons of money if you were a Japanese guy and and would you be offended knowing that they for the most part they get Hawaiian guys to portray Japanese is that not kind of racist or wouldn't you be more mad that the uh, WWE stereotypes Japanese as people who speak no English and can barely see is it, well, it's all kind of in the same category. I'd be more, uh, I'd be more offended at that. Like, who cares if they're Hawaiian? Like, Funaki's been playing a Japanese person for years. Ugh. And is he's it, Samoan. Isn't it funny, though, that we as fans have uh, bought into that typecast? Or, yeah, because we've been seen, seen it for so oh, long. I love the stories Jericho tells about Tajiri when they're on the road. The, the whole... Uh, broken English thing and then they go to Burger King and he's like yeah I want a Whopper with cheese or something yeah I heard that from JR's podcast too he's like yeah Tajiri's one of those guys who can speak perfect English but he never speaks perfect English because he, he lives the gimmick he only speaks perfect English when he needs money or when he's hungry he's like oh no it's like oh me oh me over there and then when he's hungry he's like yo man I need a fucking burger dude <laughs> But isn't that the typical, even even just real life, that the foreigners do that shit? Yeah. It's just, it, it's, Basically. it's their way hey, of... If we can speak another language, we'll do it. Hell, I bet you've done it a time or two. Yeah, a lot of, uh, so many times. Yeah. Accent. It's, it's a way of fucking with the Westerners, basically, right? Yeah. Uh, Cian Almas from NXT, have you seen... Who? Uh, remember that Cian, you know... Obviously, you don't know him. Cien Almas. I'm probably saying the name wrong. But they, they, they got him coming out looking like a stereotypical uh, hat with a feather boa. Um, I have no idea who this spenders. guy is. No idea who that is. Okay. I just, like... Because you don't watch NXT Weekly, right? Not, so. I'm trying to start to, but, like, yeah. No, he's pretty good in the ring. He's from the AAA, so... Oh, Triple H. Uh, triple A, not Triple H. Not triple, H. <laughs> triple A, not that bad. Is, is it is it good that they when they do bring in these luchadors that they unmask them to yeah. sh I, or should just they should bring them as a mask, but I can see like why WWE would unmask them just because like they do it all the time. Although they haven't unmasked Kalisto yet. Well, like Sami Zayn was a mask guy when he got signed, but he was just doing a mock stereotype. Luchador. Like one time, that was it. And I forgot to what the name was. El Generico. No, he didn't call himself El Generico. He called himself. Oh no, no, no! El Generico is his Ring of Honor name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You seen the, oh, you seen the match at Battleground? Him and Kevin Owens. Yeah, I hear it's kick ass. I have to watch Battleground. Oh, have you not watch. seen Battleground yet? I taped it, man. I, I just, I got a bit behind stuff, life, you know. Yeah, I'm catching up. True, so. but usually when there's a pay per view. Yeah, on. I know. I'll, 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 I'll watch. You make it sound like I've committed a crime. Hey, hey, you're the one that hasn't seen the uh, all the NXTs, American Alpha Revival two out of three falls match yet. So the same, but like. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's, it's like an unwritten rule if you're a wrestling fan. You, you drop what you're doing that day because uh, the pay-per-views take well, precedence not like over... every pay-per-view. It was like, if it's on, if you have nothing to do, then watch it, yeah. But as long as it's like WrestleMania, that's when you drop everything. Yeah, of course. I don't know about you, but like, how can you not, like, whatever you're doing, it's WrestleMania of all things. Yeah, of course. I agree with you on that. But how do you think the Rumble's going to work with the brand extension coming back? Are they going to do the old days, like 15... For well, well whoever from which brand wins gets their title shot on whatever brand. I just like don't the olden see, days. I just don't see the universal title being a credible title that you don't actually want to fight for. <laughs> That's the thing. Oh, they'll make it a credible thing as much as they want to. Like the ECW Championship. Hell, Undertaker showing up to fight. Can you imagine Undertaker as a universal champion? Or Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, yeah. Hell, Brock Lesnar was the same guy that... Because they had the two titles going for the undisputed title. He's like, I'm not carrying two fucking titles. I just want one title. So that was the whole reason they uh, dropped the big gold belt. Because he refused to carry two titles if he did, never knew that story. So I would believe it because it's Brock Lesnar. So that's why they, they, they made the one title. And, you know, um, I still, I don't know if you agree with me, but I personally think, you know, you got a brand, have like three titles, have the Intercontinental, one world in the tag, and have all the champions going between two brands. Isn't that the logical approach if you were doing something like a brand extension? But Vince McMahon doesn't think logically like that? Vince McMahon never thinks logically. Or is that just me that thinks 
how we, we all Jamie think like that, but like Vince McMahon never thinks logic. Rena Farrah, the most dominant woman on NXT. Nia Jax, and we're all thinking Bailey. It's like, what the fuck shit is that? I still think Bailey hasn't been drafted yet from what I'm No, hearing. she hasn't. She's on NXT. She's that still on NXT. So. That one time thing she did on Battleground was just a one time thing. She's still on NXT. You know who's going to make big waves when she finally does come up is Asuka. She's kicking ass. Asuka is amazing, dude. I like Asuka. But what's her Japanese name? I forget. I don't know. I forget. It's been a while. Um, what? Like, wouldn't it just be cool if they, they let these guys keep their names from, like, New Japan? Like, Finn Balor's a cool name, but. Let him be Prince Devitt in WWE. That would be... And then the WWE would own royalties to that name. Oh, yeah, it's the business yeah. perspective. But like, It's just what we as fans wish for, I guess. But, yeah, exactly. Um, That's why Sami Zayn is Sami Zayn, not El Generico. And Kevin Owens is Kevin Owens, not Kevin Steen. Or, and Apollo Crews is Apollo Crews. Is not, and not or, called are they Uha, called Natty Nightmare? Not, and not called Uha Nation. I like Uha Nation better. <laughs> Uha Nation... For a big guy, that's actually a pretty quick kick-ass name. Yeah. Um, you know what's funny though? Because he reminds you of Bobby Lashley, right? Except he can actually. Well, Bobby Lashley can actually go. From what I hear, he's got a lot better on the mic, even though I haven't watched. Blue Hot Nation is just way, way faster. For a big guy, he runs around like a cruiserweight. But he's got to get a personality though, man. He's very bland right now. Apollo yeah. Creed. He Apollo does. Creed. Paul. What am I? Apollo Cruz. Well, obviously. That's why they call him Apollo Crews. It's a it's a take on the Rocky name. So yeah, when he first debuted, he looked like Apollo Crews from. Doesn't even his Apollo Creed from Rocky. Even his theme song doesn't it kind of give you Rocky esque vibes? Just did you not see when he first debuted? He was dressed like Apollo yeah, Creed. Yeah, yeah, of course. In the movie. Yeah, that's the whole point. Yeah. I know. Uh, so I'm just thinking. So Backlash is coming back. Yeah, that's cool. They're also bringing back no. No, I was just thinking like. Should we even comment the fact that Kane and or are is there a point that they're there just to put new talent? Over? Kane is doing what? He's on SmackDown, Demon Kane. But well, whatever, man. He's just there to put yeah, yeah. over. I love how you're. It's like what the f why? Are, who you is you this know this, man? Yeah, I know. Kane I know. is just there to put people. Same over. with Big Show. Yeah, I know. Yeah, that's the only reason they're no, there. We're, we're shooting, so I'm just. Yeah, yeah but yeah, it's cool. They're bringing back Backlash, No Mercy. They're actually bringing in Clash of Champions. That's cool. They're doing away with, like you told me back in the day, the pay-per-view titles, the only ones that will be around basically always is the SummerSlams, the WrestleManias, the Royal Rumble. Well, who knows? They may get rid of SummerSlam or Survivor Series. No, they'll never get rid of SummerSlam. It's like there's... Well, they got rid of King of the Ring. That was part of the big five. Yeah. Yeah, technically yeah. it was the Big Five. I would say, is that something that, that we as fans assumed was the Big Five? Or well, we all knew it was the Big Five. Yeah. The class Four Big Five, and then they brought in the... Then they did King Ring only on television, which cheapened it, and no one took it seriously. King of the Ring curse, right? No, not the curse. It's just that they didn't take it seriously. It was just cheapened. That's why Bad News Barrett left. Like, they, they did fuck all with him the last year he was there, so... <laughs> and King Regal... And who else? Hey, the King Regal thing actually was going good before he got suspended because that drug stuff. Even though the wellness policy is a joke, they do take that shit seriously. Cause depending on who's done it, because like if it's a low t low key wrestler, they'll get rid of him right away. Like if it's a high end wrestler, like they'll say, "Oh shit, what are we gonna do to avoid this?" Oh yeah. Speaking of battleground, are we surprised that Ambrose actually retained the title in the Triple Threat? Yeah, I was surprised because it's Dean Ambrose. Because I thought the whole point of his title reign was to have like the Mick Foley run basically and then drop the title to Reigns or Rollins so that they could have a long term program. Or is that what we, or is that just what I was thinking? I uh, have no idea, but they're giving him a chance, which is surprising. Because I seriously thought they would drop the belt. And apparently Orton said something that got Fandango's ire going, if you. Yeah, because like he was on the highlight reel with Chris Jericho on Battleground. He's like, Chris Jericho's like making fun of him, saying like, "Oh, you come back and your first match is with Brock Lesnar. How dumb can you be?" And Randy Orton goes like, "Oh, at least my first match back wasn't against Fandango." <laughs> <laughs> oh, how the mighty f have fallen, eh? <laughs> well, Chris Jericho no, is always Fandango. Like, oh, Fandango. Is it? Been oh, he's in the most idiotic tag team name ever, Breezango. Really? You couldn't think of anything better? 
And Obviously. then you have Golden Trues on Raw, another stupid name, playing Pokemon Go on Raw, and like, wow, way to promote Pokemon Go there. Yeah, Pokemon Go is the, you know, you know it's taken off mainstream. I call Pokemon Go the real life Walking Dead. Because it is. Have you seen those videos of, on YouTube where like people are driving around and they see like tons of people just walking around with their phones like this? Did you hear about the two? Have you not seen that? Like everyone no, around there is like that. You should see those, I guess. It's insane because like they're like blocking traffic. People are just looking at their phones like, oh, I gotta get this, I gotta get that. I heard about two teenagers that crossed over uh, U.S. borders because they were playing Pokemon. I heard of one guy who fell over a cliff. Really? Because he was trying to find a Pokemon. Like, they don't pay attention to where they're going. It's like, oh, I almost got him. I almost got him. Oh, my God, no. And you know the funny thing? That's is, just hilarious. Nintendo's actually lost money on their stocks because of Pokemon Go. Really? Yeah, so. I thought they would get, gain some because everybody's, oh, yeah. like, playing that shit. I was never a fan of Pokemon Go, so I'm not playing that. And my friend, I don't think you've ever met him, JP, but everyone knows McDovin here. McGovern, he has his own channel, like, he tells me, like, hey, you need to go get Pokemon Go, and I thought, I was like, fuck that shit, I'm not playing that, you go and play it. Is this, like, an actual friend of yours, or someone you met yes. on YouTube? like, you never met him, it's like, he's always... Is he the computer genius? Yes, he's the one that hooked up my rig. And he's the My Little Pony Brony. fanboy, or... Yeah. I remember, like, I remember the first time I told you about Pronies, like, you yeah, were yeah. so fascinated about that. You gotta remember, I'm... And I know you. I, I'm a little bit naive to the world in some aspects. Exactly. Yeah, there you are. <laughs> After like seven years of bronies being here, and then I finally tell you about them, and you're like, "What the fuck?" No, dude. Seriously, I'm not the only one. I told you about that one cashier. I told that one time, and she was just amazed. So it's not like I'm alone and have never heard. Well, of this. How old was she? Well, she was like twenty, early twenties or something. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. No, I was just surprised because I thought My Little Pony, I didn't realize. But then again, in this world, anything's possible. So, you know, it just the, the fact that male boys would like My Little Pony kind of surprised me. But, you know. It, well, the thing is about bronies, they actually do get laid, unlike Star Trek fans, who are like the most socially awkward people ever. I thought that was wrestling fans. Oh, fucking. <laughs> yeah. Well, some of us are like the Marks and shit. Napoleon. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Let me tell you about this guy, Napoleon. We go to the indie show here in Edmonton, PWA. There's this guy. I don't know his real name. All of us just call him Napoleon because he looks like the Napoleon Dynamite. The dumbest motherfucker ever. The most markish Lacey Von asshole. Eric is awesome in the ring. <laughs> it's like, I still remember this one day where I just wanted to punch him in the face. It's like me and some people were talking, and then it came up to like Bobby Roode. We're talking about Bobby Roode, and then he comes walking. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I love Bobby Roode. I love how like him and Raf and Rick Roode are related." And I'm just looking at him, it's like, "You motherfucker!" And then he goes on saying like, "Oh, Lacey Von Eric can actually wrestle because she's a Von Eric. Really, bro? Really?" She, he just says stupid shit. <laughs> Even the even the wrestlers at PWA always made fun of him. I remember, the, wasn't there another like guy that was pissed off by that Bobby Roode comment? You uh, that like, guy, who I, was, I don't know who it was, but yeah. The wrestlers <laughs> at PWA, like, they were giving out some kind of thing. They're like, oh, we're about to give out some thing. It's like, we're going to give people a chance. Napoleon, do not come up here because we're giving other people a chance. And they straight up called him out on it. Because like, that, that guy always runs in first. Never gives anybody else a chance. He's the guy that they love to make fun of in PWA, basically. Yeah. Even the promoter, when he's doing promos, shoots on him or rips on him. Yeah. <laughs> and I told you the story why he, he uh, quit coming to the shows, right? If you Because he thinks he's better than them? And plus he was taking copyrighted content. Oh, right. Like just filming right in front of him. And putting it on his YouTube channel. Yeah. And for an independent promotion that... Let, you, every, obviously, if you're a wrestling fan, you know the story of indie promoters, promotions. A big part of their revenue is from merchandise and DVD sales. So they I don't remember the day he was like pissing off Lance Storm when he first came in for the first time. This was when Lance Storm was like off WWE. He came to PWA for one time. Uh, and he comes in, like, he comes walking in. Like, all, all of us are respectful and just let him walk by because that's how we Canadians do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, Napoleon sees him, he's like, oh my god, it's Lance Storm, he goes up to him, he's like, right in his face, like, <laughs> <laughs> and Lance Storm's like, 
it, like he's talking, he's like, sir, it's like blah 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 blah. The last door was like trying to walk faster to get to the door just to get <laughs> away from him. And meanwhile, Napoleon is still right in his face, like right here, right there. Would you no say, personal space. Would you say Elias Storm is maybe the most honest guy in wrestling? Like, he'll tell you like it is, basically. Yeah, because he's Elias Bullshit Storm. about him. <clears throat> yeah. Like, because uh, he always takes time to answer uh, fans' questions on his Facebook fan page. And, yeah, like, he does. He's an awesome guy. He, he'll tell you and like, like For, like, a 50-year-old, he is 50, right? Yeah. Around his 50, he can still go. Like, when that PWA show, he took on Jay Lethal. Yeah, he's definitely. He, he still has it. Actually, Jericho was talking about on his podcast. They want to, because Last Storm was an Ontario boy. They want to get him inducted into the uh, Ontario Hall of Fame, where he's from, which I they think should is pretty cool. Uh, induct him. He was actually because Jericho had his uh, big anniversary in the business last year on the uh, WWE MSG Network show. I don't know if you saw. No, I did not. Him and Cyrus. Cyrus the virus? Yeah, we're sitting ringside. Don Callis, which I thought was fucking cool. Really? I kind of marked out. Over where that. has he been? I haven't heard of He's Cyrus for the, the government now. <laughs> I haven't heard of Cyrus the virus in a long time. The last time I saw the guy was Hardcore Homecoming. Hardcore Homecoming. Why can't I say that name right? God, sounds like a poor name. No, it's... Hardcore Justice sounds like a poor name. Uh, Cyrus actually... Oh, no. You know what else sounds like a poor name from TNA? Don't they? No all... Surrender. Don't... This is a... And bound for glory. Yeah, they do. Yeah. No, but Cyrus, he actually can go in the ring. I guess that's what I was trying to say. He's a trained... He's not just uh, mad. He's a wrestler, but he can wrestle that great. I thought he was pretty good. I thought that's. He's funny. okay. Was it him and Rick Martel that were gonna do the team thing back in the Attitude Era? If you were that story, they were gonna bring Rick him Martel in. in the Attitude Era. Yeah, remember Martel went to WCW. They were talking of uh, bringing him and Don Callis in as a team. In uh, WCW? No, in WWE. It, oh, I did not know that. Yeah, I heard this on Cornette's podcast, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, I never heard that story. Or the fact, you're aware that they're going to bring Papa Shango back? When? In the Attitude Era, before Kane. Uh, he was going to be an all-modernized version of Papa Shango. Basically, he would have had Kane's spot. Oh, yeah. It would have been pretty badass. But uh, apparently, Vince didn't want two mask guys at the same time. so Because uh, he thinks people would get confused. Because Vince seems really? to think we're stupid. He does think we're stupid. Oh, the EC... I, I love... What's it? R, RVD said... Vince said fans wouldn't chant ECW because they wouldn't remember or something like that. No, he said the last ever ECW fans were at the ECW arena. Oh, okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, like I listened to the Axel Rotten interview where he's like talking about like him and Balls when they were hired by the wait, WWE. Wait. Was it Ian or Axel that passed away this past year? Axel. Oh, yeah, because he's the one that... Well, was... both Balls and Axel are dead now. Yeah. Yeah, that just sucks. Balls committed suicide, right? Or overdosed, or as sad as it was, I think. Or... I forgot what... I no, think his he wife fell asleep and died. Yeah, his wife fell asleep. No, he fell asleep. He, ch he changed position on the couch, and then he died. Shh. God, that's What a horrible. way to go. It's like you're just sleeping, and you change position, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're done. Boo Radley from Smoky Mountain Wrestling, too, I think, which a lot of people yeah, don't too many. know. But yeah, what I was saying about Axel Rotten, it's like, yeah, he's like saying, like, when him and Balls were there, when they were doing that whole retarded ECW thing that Vince Vision had, they were, like, saying, like, oh, it's like, just play to the crowd, because these people have no idea who you are, because you're in WWE. I'm going to get heat for saying this, but did you know Axel Rotten could actually do more than the hardcore shit. Yeah, of He course. talked about I mean, that on Jericho's that, podcast. Like, yeah, like you, before ECW, he did a lot of stuff. He, he just, got tight He's just known for doing all that hardcore shit. And and maybe me as a mark, only thought of him as this hardcore, uh, nothing more, nothing less type guy. The but one I, who can't do shit for at all is New Jack. He can wrestle for worse than Dan. I love that story he between the rules. He just knows how to beat people oh, up. Wait, wait, wait. Remember uh, back in the day, Fritz talking about... Hey, G. Brian Fritz, New Jack on the phone. <laughs> yeah. No, but like the whole oh, Axel Rotten, Axel Rotten story is like when they're in like Raw or a house show, they're saying like, oh yeah, go out there and play to the crowd because they have no idea who you are. But like, yeah, these are WWE people. They no have no clue who you are. This is the first time they've seen you. It's like Axel, like oh. Okay. And as soon as they went out, everyone's chanting ECW Axel Balls because they actually know who they are. And you know what's funny? And like, uh, like, as soon as they went to the back, they go like, oh, I, yeah, I guess they knew us. And uh, I think it was Johnny, John Lauren Ice. It was like, oh, it's just a fluke. The next, 
city, they don't won't know who you are. See, these guys, for being corporate executives that are supposed to... The whole purpose of being a bigwig in a company is to have uh, a, 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 an ear to the public to know what they want. These guys sure act pretty stupid as it relates to that. Whether That's it's, every company out there. Every corporate executive is like that because... So did every, I just say something yeah. that made myself look stupid? <laughs> Basically, like every other company, corporate executive. No, but wrestling especially. I guess. Wrestling especially, yeah. Like, um, and you know, you know, I remember I told you how I met the million dollar man Ted DiBiase a few years ago. Yeah, this guy's a that. fucking minister, and he still has the oath of secrecy as it relates to the re wrestling business. Hey, once you're in the business, you're in the wrestling business for life. You take that shit to the grave. Even if you're a Christian minister, same thing? It depends. Like, some people just sell it to you for, like, whatever. But Ted DiBiase, he's a loyal man. Yeah, company man. And you know what's funny? Uh, remember when Jake came back in 96 and he was doing the whole Born Again? Uh, hell, his snake was called Revelations, for fuck's sakes. The guy yeah, doing the whole Christian thing. And he was still smoking, cracking... Or is that William Regal that like brought Black Jake Black Roberts? Black. He was in a bad way back then. I guess what I'm trying to say is he did the Christian gimmick, but he was still living a life full of debauchery. A life full of debauchery because it's yeah. Jake Roberts. And when Jerry, one of those guys where I'm still surprised is still alive. How about all Scott these Hall? Other, well, him too. Like all these other people are dying left and right, and yet Scott Hall and Jake Roberts are still alive. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying it's a good thing that they're still alive. I don't want them to die. But hell, how are they still alive? Hell, even all when China died, man. Free? What? Even when China passed away, no one should pass away like that. That's just horrible. But... Yeah, true. Oh, I listen to Vince Russo's podcast. I've been listening to him more and more often now. He's like talking about like he got so pissed off at what Triple H said when they were asking like why isn't China in the Hall of Fame. And Triple H goes like, oh, well, if you, if, like, say, like, some 10-year-old Googled China's name, what do you get? Yeah, that's why she's not in the Hall of Fame. Well, they'll probably... Vince Russo was so pissed. Yeah, him and China were tight, I think. Yeah, it's like, yeah, man, like, oh, yeah, you Googled China, really? How about if you Google Mike Tyson? Yeah. What comes up? Or and he's in the Hall of Fame. Or Jimmy Snuka, or... Jimmy Snuka. Sonny. So, is he, like, all better now and, like, not pretending to be... Uh, I'm confused on the whole thing, confused. but from I think I, he played everyone by pretending to be uh, insane. If, off the record, if you were just asked, just me and you talking one friend to another and doing this video, I would say he's fucking kayfabe in it. Uh, he's, yeah, he got, away, it's like, uh, it's like, he got away with it smiling, because, like, he... It's like he's doing a bunch of shit now. It's like and you know, he's doing a bunch of shit. A guy who can't even remember shit shouldn't even be doing. No, but like you told. Isn't me, that weird? Yeah, but like you told me in a Facebook message, like we don't actually have proof that he did this. Right. So, innocent True. till proven guilty. I yes. Guess. Exactly. And you know, uh, like uh, the same thing. I guess even though it's off topic. Or did they prove that OJ actually did the, the OJ? OJ Simpson, the murders and night the the night. No, they never proved it. So, but we all know he did it. <clears throat> yeah, but again, in his <laughs> like basically, they told him to put on the glove while he's wearing a glove. Of course, the glove's not gonna fit when you're wearing a fucking glove. That was stupid. Don't you remember that? Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that was hilarious. It's like, sir, OJ, put on the glove. Okay, let me put on this other glove. And now what's it's like, he... no one even stopped him. It's like, oh yeah, the glove doesn't fit. And he's now in jail for stealing his neighbor's shit. <laughs> no, no, no. He's in jail for trying to steal back his own shit. That's karma for you. Which is fucking hilarious. Because someone took all his shit, he went back, tried to take it back, and he got arrested for it. Which is hilarious. <laughs> it was like, he got off for murder, then years later, he goes to jail for stealing his own shit back. Because That's obviously, just hilarious. Obviously, we know O.J. Simpson's claim to fame is he had a... Uh, a career in the 1970s in the NFL, like, mm -hmm. playing for Buffalo. Football and being in the Naked Gun movies. It's kind of weird looking at him in the Naked Gun movies now, because it's O.J. Simpson. Really, like, as great as how to For those of you know. who don't know what the Naked Gun is, because you're way too young, and those yeah, of you who, old. For those of you who don't know, who do know what I'm talking about, Naked Gun is awesome, and you all know it. But for the youngins out there, go check out Naked Gun with Les Nielsen, who have, if they have no idea Naked who Gun, that is. If they remade Naked Gun, who, who could I just... don't think, you no, know, man, you should never remake Naked Gun, because if you've seen the horrible comedy shit that they do today... If I said... Naked Gun 2016 with Jimmy Fallon? Oh, for fuck's sakes, fuck that shit. No, the problem with today is like, 
they don't play it straight. Like, uh, Naked Gun, they took everything, they played it straight with everything. Like, a bunch of bullshit is happening on in the background, a bunch of crazy shit in the background. Everybody's mugging the camera and was like, oh my god, so wacky! Because with what you just said, you make it sound like Naked Gun was like Back to the Future, and you can't recapture that magic once no, in a lifetime. I'm saying, because like today's movies are different because like oh, okay have you it's like scary movie four and five they're way different because like scary movie one and two were not like in your face because keenan ivory waynes knew how to do it right or oh. then they had different directors and they were just mugging for the camera look at the movie epic movie piece of shit because they kept on doing mugging the cameras like in your face date movie disaster movie all that shit didn't so yeah superhero movie for fuck's sakes or like, bad girlfriend, whatever. Yeah, that or, shit. Jesus. You know, uh, I, what was I going to say? Um, speaking of, like, do, do you find it awesome? Because I always seem to forget this because I was listening to Jericho's uh, podcast with Mr. Belding recently. That guy <laughs> Mr. loves Belding. Him. That guy is maybe more passionate about the wrestling business than we are, man. Because he has He's no career ultimate... anymore. That's all he has no, now. No, he was in that Seth MacFarlane movie a couple years ago. A million Which, years to die in the West. Really went, and look how good that movie made out to me. I haven't seen it, but it was shit from what No, I but heard. we all say he's typecast as Mr. Belding for life. He's still managing to get roles out there. Like little movies here and there. Like He was in the Rack City music video, which you have no idea what I'm no, talking about. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> because I'm out, I'm out yeah. in touch. No, but I bet you when you, you, you hear the name, uh, uh, like, fuck. Okay. It'll I'll, come to you. I just can't think of the name of the guy. I know, I'll just say Mr. Belding, but... He, we all know him by Mr. Belding. Even I don't know what his real name is. You, no, but the fact Dennis that... Dennis Haskins. Yeah, Dennis. thank you. Yeah. I, I just didn't want to... I, I guess we all have those moments, right? Yeah. So, Dennis Haskins, basically, like, obviously he's been typecast as Mr. Belding for life. And, you know, the, the funny thing is, he got... Fu a lot of those Saved by the Bell actors, you know... Imagine they'd be set for life if they were cashing in on those Saved by the Bell royalties. He got fucked over on those. And that's Everyone did, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. I, well, like, he yeah. said himself, but basically, you know, um, just the fact... Do you, do you just not respect the fact, like, that he's... The passion he has for the business and the boys have accepted him. They don't look at him as a mark and... You know, he's taking bumps. Really? The boys have accepted him? Yeah, the they're they didn't. He, okay, he's hung out with Dolph them. Ziggler and them. Well, it's fucking Mr. Belding, man. They, they all grew well, up. I thought Mr. Belding was just doing that just to uh, stay relevant. No, but the guy worked an indie show with Matt Hardy. He took bumps and stuff. That's cool. No, shit. That's pretty cool. I like. And, you know, cool. staying in touch with the boys. Speaking like, of Matt Hardy, what do you think of the Brother Nero gimmick? It's weird. Yeah. I still haven't seen the final deletion match. One of these days, I have to watch that really weird match. Broken Man, I think he's calling himself now or something. Broken Man, Brother Nero or something. But isn't Matt Hardy always been known for his creativity? He's kind of not... He's out there, but not as out there as Jeff, I guess. It's the Hardy Boy mindset, I guess. The, or has like, Matt always people. been the same one? Matt's always been the same one. I've never seen him do one crazy thing before. Or maybe he's been smoking some pot with Jeff. How, or maybe Jeff excuse me, came up with this whole... Uh, Storyline. Who but knows? I don't even know, but yeah. Apparently, no, but you would think with the brand extension, the Hardy Boys would be the perfect uh, candidates to bring both of them back, whether it be Raw or Smack. Well, who knows? The brand extension is brand new. Well, not brand new because it's been done before, but they're bring they just brought it back. We still got a lot's way to go. They're bringing back Sheldon Benjamin. Who else are they going to bring back? Maybe Naked Minion? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> it was bad enough he was on TV. I completely blocked him out of my mind. And then you brought Naked Midian back up. <laughs> That's something I never wanted to remember ever again. You suck. <laughs> or when he was also Kevin Sullivan's brother, WCW Dave Sullivan. Like that was someone different. That was... Uh, I thought that was him. No, it was somebody else. I forgot what his name is, but it wasn't Dennis Knight. Oh, I swear it was Dennis Knight. But... He played Shanghai Pierce and uh, the other guy. Henry Godwin and Dennis Knight. Okay. Oh, yeah. Henry Godwin and Phineas Godwin. They were both Shanghai Pierce and somebody else in WCW. Tex Slash. Tex Slashinger. Tex Slagger. Whatever the fuck. Tex and Shanghai. So he wasn't... I always thought he was Dave Sullivan. That's, that's... No, that was someone different. But could you see how... 
could mistake him for that. Not really, because he looks nothing like him. He looks different. We always forget that. Kevin Sullivan actually had a uh, kind of a dim-witted brother in WCW. Well, not a real brother. No, but like, KV-wise. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. Kevin Sullivan. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dave Sullivan, the slow, retarded one. <laughs> I remember that. It was weird. Oh, OSW, they, they released a new video review, Fall Brawl 95. Oh, they finally brought it out? I've been waiting months. I've been I waiting like I, a month for that. I thought it finally came out because i seen it show up in my YouTube video feed. I was like, I've been checking every day and nothing so far. But when they finally brought it out, I'm so watching that <clears> when I get home later on. And like you told me, uh... The number Cause one. it's always awesome to hear an always always W reviewed. I love the I just the accents are cool. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. You know they are basically the new between the ropes. Yeah. Back in the day when between the ropes were actually awesome. And you know what's movie. funny when they they started that podcast, it was just an experiment to do the Hulk mini air, and then yeah, they, they took off, and then they did twenty noggers, and then uh, they they did. I, I'm in the process of watching their total uh, divas review right now, and. Just reminded me how horrible that fucking shit I don't know why I ever watched the first two episodes. I would guess I was bored, but I never watched anything else after that. But it, there, isn't that the point of reality TV? It's it, it, Most reality TV is scripted. All of it is scripted. The ones that was upon a time, one time, where it wasn't scripted, then all of a sudden it started to become scripted so when, somewhere. When Flavor F Flay and Bridget Nielsen fell in love, that was scripted. <laughs> well, that wasn't scripted. That was actually kind of real. I don't know. A couple. Who knows? Maybe. Because, you know, publicity and shit. And her claim to fame is the Rocky movies, I think. Uh, yeah. And what else has she done? She's done a bunch of other shit. I think she dated Sylvester Stallone for a while, but yeah. I could be wrong. But, um, so, all in all, SummerSlam, you got Ambrose and Ziggler. How awesome is that match going to be? Oh, I'm surprised. You know what? They're actually saying that the new people are actually getting a fair title shot. But if you really think about it, Dolph Ziggler isn't really new. He's in his like thirties. He's not that ten years old. He's not that young anymore. You know, it's like I don't know who, where I read this from. I think it was WhatCulture.com. We're like saying like, um, how are these fans saying like it's awesome seeing these new guys in because they're young and fresh and they're going to not all of them, not really, not they're not young and fresh. Dean Ambrose is in his. 30s, AJ Styles is almost 40. You gotta remember, new era. It does make a good point, but I'm saying, yeah. I know. yeah. But still, it is awesome to see them, because, like, yeah. But we're kind of forgetting that they're really old now. They're not that young anymore. Uh, new era, also, and we just talked about this earlier, it, it, it's great, the term, but it's just a fucking another made-up term for marketing purposes. Yeah, because it's the new era of the new era of the new era of the new I era. I bet they'll come up with a new era shirt. I wouldn't be surprised. But that would be so stupid. I can see that they actually uh, would do that. Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows. Do they not look like they could be brothers? Yeah, they could. And Luke Gallows, the fucking guy, looks like he. How old would you say he looks? Forty-five. Around that. The guy was nineteen and he looked forty-five. <laughs> <laughs> so true. But yeah, they're they're. Oh no, you know what? They remind me of uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, Doctor Evil and Mini Me. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, too. Carl Anderson, the meaning me of Luke Gallows. Carl Anderson, though, all, all I know of him is he had a stint in New Japan, Ring of Honor, but I don't know, other than that, I'm I haven't seen much of him, but I like his of work because I've seen some matches of him. It was cool. You know what's funny? Uh, in New Japan, his nickname is Machine Gun Carl Anderson. I yeah. don't think they've mentioned that on No, the, not at all. It's probably because it's PG. How can you have Machine Gun in there? Just like, remember when... 9-11 hit, they didn't do the Armageddon pay-per-view because the title... Yeah, and would... then they brought it back after a while. Speaking of 9-11, I just gotta say it. If Donald Trump wins, it's gonna be like 9-11 all over again. You know what I mean? Fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Remember what happened when 9-11 happened? Muslims got beat up just because they were Muslim. Yeah. And now, if Donald Trump becomes president... So many minorities are going to get beat up. It's going to be like 9-11 all over again. I hate to say this, though. I think Vince McMahon, him and Trump are pretty tight. He yeah, probably... they've always been tight. And, you know, do you, do you agree with what they're saying? Uh, Donald Trump is the businessman's president. He's going to run the country like a corporation. It, it all depends who you talk to. Some people say that's a good thing. Some say it's a bad thing. So it's all about your prerogative, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, the fact that his... Uh, 
Is his girlfriend like 30 years younger than him or something? Yeah, like, you ever see Donald Trump ever date a woman his age? No. But no. the fact she stole Michelle Obama's speech, from what they're saying, really? That's not really good uh, uh, reputation heading into. But then again, what president doesn't have controversy to them? Like, it, Nixon had that whole Every water. president has controversy. Hell, Obama is getting shit on because like he's fixing the shit that Bush fucked up, and they're blaming it on all on Obama. Who don't want to funk it that we're talking about politics on a wrestling show? No, we've talked about it before, yeah. but it's you know um, I remember our, the video we did way back earlier this year. We went on to we had a good laugh over that whole fucking wall in Mexico thing. Like yeah. and the fact that the Mexican is it president in Mexico? Mexi- was, former Mexican president. I think he, from what I hear, uh, Trump, okay, number one, he wants he to... He said he's not doing it, and yeah. he's not going to make him. And then Donald Trump said, like, oh, the wall just got bigger. No, but what I, the, the Great Wall of China, apparently the story, I, I'm just referencing this, it was built to keep the Mongolians out way back <laughs> in the day. you Mongolian, then you're a shitty wall. You don't get that, no, but self, no, nothing, you don't get that South Park reference, do you? Mm, I haven't seen that in a while. I just got to say, it's like... Damn you, Mongolians, you fucking... Is that where the crazy Asian wall? guy built the wall? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I love that episode. Yeah. Was like, the Mongolians... Damn you, Mongolians, get out of here! Damn you, Mongolians! No, but all I'm saying with the, the wall is no infrastructure is perfect. They're, 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 they will always find a way to get through. Whether yeah. you're bribing... Even though you told me Mexican money is worthless. <laughs> well, it kind of is. I never ever heard of a Mexican bribe a Border Patrol person. Cause like, who wants Mexican money? Let's be real here. Pesos, Let's right? be real here. Who wants Mexican money? No one really. Is not the currency in Spain too? Same as Mexico? Yeah. True. Yeah. But it was like, yeah. Yeah, Trump's off as a rocker, man. And isn't he... So, uh, with Finn Balor now... No, wait, 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 wait. Trump, yeah. isn't he in the WWE Hall of Fame? Because yeah. He's the, he what were you saying about Finn Balor? <clears throat> Finn Balor, like, when he came out on Raw, his titan said Balor Club. So are they bringing in the Balor Club or what? Uh, probably join they're gonna Carl Anderson and uh, what's his face Luke Gallo yeah Rob. do you want to see it immediately or do you want a slow build as a fan preference well they're already there so why not put them together but then slowly put more and more I don't know will it be like the NWO where they're gonna constantly put people in they'll probably have a Balor club on Smackdown because AJ Styles says like hey he split us up they're still gonna be a club anywhere I think that's kind of cool though personally yeah we that's just awesome. expanded I'll have one on SmackDown, you have one on Raw. So if you're saying they're like the NWO, they're going to have their own ver- version of Virgil in Scotland. No, no, it'll be like NWO original and NWO silver and gold or whatever but the fuck that was. Virgil, gold. that fucking guy, for being as untalented as he is, he sure got a lot of work in the business. Yeah? Because he was in the right place at Freaking the right West time. Freaking West Texas Rednecks. We all seem to forget that. <laughs> you know that Stable was supposed to be a heel t- tag team? Yeah. That everyone was supposed to hate, but since they were bashing on rap and everybody loved Cause... country music, they became faces. Who doesn't love old school country music, man? That's, that stuff I don't like country music. Not the old stuff, like no. Michael Jennings? It's, no, it's no, kind no. of catchy stuff. But... I just don't find it uh, enjoyable, but yeah. It's like back when Hog Wild and Steiner Brothers took oh, on Harlem Heat. Speaking in of, a place full of bikers, Harlem Heat was a face. Faces. <laughs> Steiner Brothers were the heel, and the bikers cheered on Steiner Brothers because they didn't like the black guys. And, and the whole purpose of Hog Wild is because Bischoff had a boner for motorcycles. <laughs> yeah. What they call it after? Fall? No. Hog Wild, Road Wild, and Road Wild. They call it Road Wild after because they go like, ah, probably not having it where a bunch of bikers are is not a good idea. Um, I'm just thinking of the, all the old uh, Slambery, uh, Bash, Sin, Greed. Those are gay. Yeah. Fall Brawl, Super. WCW had a lot of similar pay-per-view title names if you ever noticed. Bash at the Beach, Great American Bash, Super Brawl, uh, Slambery, Star. Fall Brawl, Super Brawl, um, Halloween Havoc. I thought the Fed was talking about bringing back Halloween Havoc back in the day. Did you ever... Yeah, they always talked thing? about that, but they never actually happened. At least they're actually bringing back Clash of the Champions now. That's classic stuff, man. Steamboat Flair. Yeah. Oh, speaking of Steamboat, did you know that him and Skinner had a short-lived feud on early WWF TV? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Everybody had, like, a feud with somebody back then. And just because he was called the Dragon, 
Vince has to literally dress him up like a dragon. Oh, a fucking dragon. And spits fire. I don't know what's worse, that or Saba Simba. <laughs> hey, but Saba Simba was Tony Atlas' idea. Yeah, I know, we just always yeah. joke about that. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, Bad News Bro Bruno or whatever the fuck that gimmick was. Bad it? News Brown? No, 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 the one Harvey Whipple made. No. Oh, Bad News Bruno. Or No, no, Bruno's Harvey Whipple. Did you know he started in Jerry Lawler's Memphis uh, Wrestling? Because he was like He a, started somewhere, so he's officially a wrestler, but he's still goddamn skinny. You know, remember the WCW referee Scott Pee Anderson, or the, the one that died of cancer? That everyone loved, or you probably don't recollect. It rings a bell, but I don't remember who he is. But basically, his gimmick of being the ultimate fanboy, uh, he claims apparently Harvey Whippleman stole his st st thing. So it's funny. Everyone's always claiming someone st stole something from someone else. Yeah, else. it's always something like that in this business. Fuck. Everyone's stealing somebody. But whatever. Uh, Remember, like, back in Beyond the Mat, like, I forgot. I think it was Mike Mondo who was having, like, a... It's uh, a match on Raw. You know, like, he was nobody back then. Oh, I remember that, or yeah. somebody, like, he did a move, and Vincent Mann's looking at it, and he goes like, oh, that's an interesting move. And X-Pac walked by, and was like, hey, I'm taking that. <laughs> or Scott Hall telling... Or was that Billy Gunn? I don't remember. Yeah. I haven't seen him on the mat in a year. That's the one where... Or is that the one where they made Jake uh, portray him to be even more of a druggie, like, just... Since when is Jake not No, no, I know he's a druggie, but they, they, they portrayed it on... The, more so on the, the, they highlighted all of his worst moments yeah or is that, am I thinking of another uh, well Jake Roberts yeah I remember that uh, big guy he, he ran the monster fa factory promotion and he, the, the one that brought all the, promo the wrestlers to the tryouts for Raw he's the one that ran that pr promotion oh the big guy yeah he They're passed really away big, a couple years ago uh, due to heart failure or something. Yeah, because he was a huge guy. Which is sad, but you know, it, no, but it, it's cool because you know, they have the, you got your bad promoters and then you got your, because he, he, he seemed like a really caring yeah, he was a good that promoter. looked out for the guys. Yeah, and then there's some bad promoters that just take your money. Like, uh, the, the guy, the guys that, you know, like, uh, mass transit claiming he was trained by somebody, but he really wasn't trained. And then yeah, because he just wanted to get on there. And then and had a match with New Jack of all people, which was his own fault. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I hate to be mean, but it's kind of his own fault. Like, uh, why would you take on New Jack? Especially, why would you tell New Jack, hey, New Jack, I want to bleed in this match. He's like, okay, you didn't tell me how much you wanted to bleed. And they were actually thinking of bringing him in to do an angle with John Cena, but then they realized he could New Jack. Go. Yeah. Yeah. They brought him in to run the ropes, and he got tired in the first second. So that got squashed. No wonder all those matches in ECW were fucking hardcore. Why do you think he just had his music blaring the entire time? That's because Paul Heyman was a genius, man. Yeah, because, like, yeah, so you have the entire thing going on, you can't hear the crowd saying, oh, you fucking shit. <laughs> but the fans loved him anyway, because he just beat people Wait, up. You know what's awesome? Did you, even though it's been a couple of years, did you notice Heyman cut off his ponytail? It's been like that for quite a yeah, while. Yeah, no, I said that, but you know the, the reason he did? Why? It's because, like us fans, ECW was the past. You, it, yeah. Like, you gotta just have to let it die. Just yeah. Let it die. That's what he said, like, about all these reunion shows. It, enough is enough. Just take it How for many times did. can you have, like, the triple threat Sabu, Terry Funk, and S Shane Douglas again? And even though Tommy Dreamer runs a hardcore homecoming promotion, that's not like easy to no, no. It's a different name though, but it still has. But the purpose is it's just hardcore related. But th there's more to it than that. Hell, I think Shawn Michaels did an appearance at one of the hardcore homecomings, which surprised me. That'd be surprising. So I thought he was just a <coughs> a WWE guy, couldn't do anything else. But I guess he's not wrestling. He can like go anywhere else he wants. So, now that the heat's died down, Jerry Lawler has got his job back. Are you surprised by that, or... Because all the trouble... Well, he isn't Adam Rose, because Adam Rose... Who cares about Adam Rose? No, the king. Jerry Lawler. I know what I'm saying, because Adam Rose got the same thing, almost, and he got released. I'm just saying, Jerry yeah, Lawler is not Adam Rose. But Jerry Lawler is up here. Yeah. No, no I'm not knocking Adam Rose. Still wish they would have done the Leo Kruger gimmick. That would have made him a big star, but that's... By the way, Curtis Axel... <laughs> Why is he dressed like Masada now? But the coup? Oh, you don't know Masada? Uh, did he change his gear on? I watched. Well, he has different gear. Like his shorts are almost like what Masada wears. I just know he, they dropped them out again as per usual. Yeah, 
But I know it was like his shorts that he's wearing. Or exactly like Masada. So what is he, like the Masada now? Who knows? They're not Go doing check out Masada when you get home. Like They're Masada not doing the night. social outcast thing anymore? Or? Well, you got Heath Slater and Mas Curtis Axel on different shows. Well, Bo Dallas ain't doing anything. He, is he on Raw or SmackDown? I have no idea. I know it. Because the, the last... What do you... I was just gonna say, are they, have they put him back in the, the baby Huey trunks and I, uh, back to getting Scorpion Death Drop by Sting the day probably, after? Probably, because it's Bo Dallas. And speaking of Bo Dallas, something considering Bo Dallas, his older brother, or younger brother, whichever. Older Bray, okay. Bray Wyatt. You know how like they make him look like a really weird guy on TV all the time? Uh-huh. Like, yeah, he's like a special kind of dude. We all got... Okay, tell me why. During the raw, like the draft thing, people are watching the last match. In both locker rooms are watching the match, and you see Bray Wyatt back there just chilling there by the locker room, and thinking like, "Really, this is Bray Wyatt we're doing here? Why is he with people here? He looks like a normal dude, which he's not." No, they gotta make him out to be like the, the he's the new new Undertaker, I guess. I know that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, I get you. Like he's just he's just there in the back, just leaning on hey, the locker. Hey, 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 hey. Back in the Attitude Era, when Undertaker was still doing the Dead Man, you probably don't remember this, but he came out on an episode of Raw, and this was before the American Badass, in bike attire, and he choke slammed a bunch of jobbers. So he he broke kayfabe once on TV. So it's yeah, but good. that's when he was doing ministry thing, wasn't he? No, that's when he was transitioning between. He was a tweener. He was. Uh, this was during when. Remember, he was the special enforcer for the uh, Taker. Oh wait, before he left, right? Because he got yeah, like a yeah, groin that, injury. This was before. This oh, right, right, yeah. When he was teaming with Big Show? Before, this was before that. Oh. Big Show wasn't even in there yet. Really? This was when he was confused. And, okay, I gotta uh, go back and watch that. Yeah. I remember that. Because there's a lot of things that happened that we, we can't remember everything, yeah, right? Yeah, So, like, uh, you know, probably don't want to remember, but remember when Jim Cornette had the horrible NWA faction? <laughs> he always <laughs> jokes about that to this bombastic Bob. Jeff Jarrett, Blackjack Wyndham, Bombastic Bob, and Bontacious uh, Bart. Oh, God. The WWE's way of taking a shot at the, the na National Wrestling Alliance. Yeah, of course. Oh, and speaking of tweener, is Randy Orton the face now? Has he been a face for a couple of years? I thought years? it was like he like a tweener. Technically he's a face, but... But like technically before he came back, like he was always like a tweener, like in the verge of face and heel. He was like, with the authority. Did whatever he wanted to do, like stone cold. Yeah, technically. Now he's coming back, he's being all like buddy-buddy, and I'm all like, what? what is this, really? Is he slapping the fans' hands but, or... No, a little bit, but he's like smiling and shit, but here's the thing though. He's being like all happy and shit, but then when he has a match, if like something goes wrong, then he starts twitching, and then all of a sudden becomes a viper. I like that, but I'm saying like, what are they doing? Like he's a face, but when nothing, when something's not going his way, he's like starting to change into a, a bastard. I thought he was like, like you see, he's like Stone Cold. He's uh, uh, got bad guy intentions, but he gets cheered anyway. Yeah, but remember, like before he left, he was like, he looked like a bad guy, but he was tweenish. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, always look pissed off. That's the whole Viper character. Yeah. But yeah, like, when you watch the SmackDown and shit, just watch when he comes out in the ring. Or hell, when you watch Battleground, watch when he comes out to the ring. He's, like, yeah. joking around. Yeah. No, I didn't watch it, but I, I read the results. Yeah. I, I just was surprised, like I said, that... Uh, did, did Ambrose pin Reigns cleanly? That's what I read. Reigns just got pinned cleanly on Raw and at Battleground. Yeah, speaking of Reigns... <laughs> You didn't see Raw, have you? I haven't seen about. I I'm just finishing up last week's draft episode of oh, SmackDown. Okay. Oh, um, well, what happened on Raw is basically. I read the results. I know. No, they, no. Before that, like they have everybody out in the ring. Like you're saying. Yeah, like, and then they announce the Universal Championship. No, no. After whole after that, like they're saying, like we're gonna have two Fatal Four Way matches. But before that, there was like saying like, oh Roman Reigns, you were the one that dropped the ball last night. It's all your fault. You have a champion. <laughs> They're shitting on him left and right, it's like calling him a piece of shit, <laughs> yeah, basically. And then they're saying, oh, we got this Fatal 4-Way Oh, yeah, yeah. And now all of a sudden, Roman Reigns is in one. I'm like, how does that make any sense? I think you talked about that on your Instagram. Yeah, I did. I just have to talk about it again because it doesn't make any sense. Like, you're calling this guy a piece of shit left and right. All of a sudden, it's like, oh, by the way, you're in this Fatal 4-Way thing. Really? Really? Your booking doesn't make sense. You, you know, once again... Do you, do you ever get sick of how many times... Is it because the Attitude Era was our era, why we referenced it so many times? Yeah. 
Because you know what? We, was you know you never noticed that no one mentions ruthless aggression era, even though it was an amazing era. Is it because maybe we tied in with the attitude era? I don't know. But it's a different era, but no one really talks about it that much. Was it actually an era, or was that just? We're ruthless aggression era, yeah. We called it the ruthless aggression. Does it have era. its own wiki page? I have no idea, but we fans know it's the ruthless aggression era. I always think of the ruthless aggression era as the John Cena era. Basically. Well, he was part of it. Cause that's when he debuted. It. And it's because he used that term, right? I guess. Yeah. No, no, but Vince McMahon coined it. Oh, yeah. I think I remember. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know what's funny, though? Like, once again, the Attitude Era was great, but it also had a lot of shitty moments, too. I guess that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. But, you know, they did... Of course. Did, every era has its shitty moments. No, but they, they did it right. The whole Stone Cold McMahon thing, the chasing the title, they booked that stuff right. Like, he got stripped of it at the breakdown pay-per-view. Yeah. And, you know, I missed the breakdown pay-per-view. They should bring that back. Fully loaded. Fully loaded. Another one. Unforgiven. And you know what's funny? Unforgiven was actually stolen from a Clint Eastwood movie. <laughs> well, yeah. It's Unforgiven. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, is this video we're doing, is it wrestling related? Or well, we've been talking about, about wrestling the whole entire time. Well, no. Whatever else you want to talk about. Uh, I was talking about Mr. Belding earlier. It was cool how he went on about the origins of the show. Technically... The Miss Bliss show, Which show was a separate show from Saved by oh, the Bell. Oh, right, right. Because uh, apparently, remember they were in junior high on the Miss Bliss show? Yeah. And then when they, it was like, because in syndication, I think they just packaged it all together as one show. Because they canceled the Miss Bliss show and then they brought and it back into a different name. Miraculously, like the second season, those characters went to Saved by the Bell and they went from being in junior high to high school. Yeah. Typical sitcom aging the characters kind of like Richie on Family Matters right. <laughs> and then we had the college years which wasn't that bad that big biker dude I, was he a student or? he was a I, I was know what he was he was some teacher's assistant no he was like the floor supervisor or some shit did you ever have a, a teacher like Mr. Belding in your own high school years because the guy really did care about the students yeah that's a Mr. Belding's here and there he always put the needs of the students first yeah and you know you know what was, I hate, just thinking about it now, junior high, high school, I hated those teachers that actually treated you like you were a dumb punk kid. Very rare was it a teacher that gave you that mutual respect, respect. like an adult, like Mr. Belding did yeah. with his students. Hell, they had one episode, I don't know if you remember, where his brother shows up. Oh, right. And they go on a rafting trip, and then he pulls out and... Mr. Belding is such a loyal guy, even to his brother, he doesn't want to tell the students the truth. He's like, oh, yeah, or Rob, or whatever his name is, had something going on. So it's like, I'll take you guys. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, Mr. Belding was an amazing principal. He, like, he really did care about them. <laughs> you know, it, the, the, probably, it's, I'm just guessing, you probably don't have a lot of teachers in, in real life like Mr. Belding. I'm just no, guessing. No, it's, it's a fair commodity, man. Like That's all I'm saying, yeah. but... But you anyways, know. I think we're going to end it like that. Yeah. This is J-Pan. Go check out his channel. Stay my channel. I need no, I'm just joking. Shameless plug. Anyways, take it easy, guys. Human Nation out, and this is J-Pan. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.